class. It's in the morning at the end. And it's really nice, kind of crystal shelf area. It's beautiful. It looks like an amethyst <laughs> to me. Um, so yeah, it's in the morning. We've got another storm today. So now I've finished this, I'm just going to go home and... The plan is to maybe make some nice food, nice warm food, and read books. So we will let you know what we're reading today in this stormy day. currently reading, Shani? I have been reading quite a bit, Yeah. but I feel like I've hit a little bit of a wall. Right. And Tell I'm me in... about it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, and I um, am in that thing of not sure what to read today. Right. So I do have some which I have started, but I don't know if they're what I want to read. Okay. So what I have started, I did start this one which I talked about um, because it was in my TBR jar, yes. um, which is The Men in My Life and it's Memoir of Love and Art in 1950s Manhattan by Patricia Bosworth. Um, and I think it's going to be good. It looks good. Yeah. But it does start off with her brother's suicide. Okay. So it's kind of a little bit heavy going. And then her, you know, I'm not far in and her dad's also kind of right. overdosed on pills. So maybe not twice. today, you think. So I'm like feeling like you need to be maybe a little bit ready for those things. Okay. It's told very matter-of-factly, so I don't actually... Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, but she seems really interesting because she has written biographies of Diane Arbus. Yeah. Um Montgomery Clift, who's already turned up, her dad was his lawyer, I think. Okay. Marlon Brando and Jane Fonda. There's also a bit where um I think her dad was a lawyer mm. and then and and they had quite a lot of money and um they can he kind of felt oh we'll always be rich kind of thing yeah. but then he defended like you know with like the blacklisting yeah so he defended some of the kind of people who were blacklisted and then no one would would yeah. um go yeah, to him so you said that she, was she an actress as well so she said that she was part of the strasbourg mm. school so she went to did actually yeah. with marilyn monroe i think as well. a lot of those that crowd were blacklisted right they? okay um, Interesting. So, yeah, Marilyn Monroe as well. So I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So the other one I've started is Outline by Rachel Cusk. Um, and I've read two chapters. Uh, I'm not sh sure I'm into it, really. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not hooked, let's right. put it that way. Okay. It feels like quite an intellectual sort of exercise. Rather so again, than... maybe not today. Yeah, so those the, that's the fiction, non-fiction I'm kind of in the middle of, but not sure I want to read today. Okay, read so some... it's it's a Sunday, and we've had quite a busy week, yeah. and we were really busy yesterday, and there's Storm Dennis outside, and there's loads of flooding around us as well, so we're going to sort of lock ourselves in, and our plan is to have like a, a reading day, because we've both not read very much this week. Yeah. We? So, yeah, this is very important stuff, that we need to find <laughs> the right books to read. So. This might not be it either, yeah. but it's... Um... One that I've been reading little bits of this morning, and I and I do really like it. Liken it, <laughs> Awakening Body, and it's by Reginald A. Ray, um, and it's kind of about uh, well, it's a somatic meditation for discovering our deepest life. So it's like I haven't read much, but it's kind of about meditation coming from the body rather than just from your mind, mm. which I'm I'm interested in. Yeah, yeah. So I that. think it's also okay, you know, like the because I, I haven't really read anything well like a few pages maybe this week but it's okay to let yourself not read yeah if, you know, if that's not the mood you're in yeah you know and that's something i've had to learn but yeah but i am in the middle of quite a few books so um my plan is to hopefully or at least try and finish this today which is the last of her kind by sigrid nunez um i'm absolutely loving this book um i have i think i've ordered another one of hers from the library the friend um yeah, so it just follows the lives of these two um, two girls, these two friends. So it's currently in sort of the 80s, 90s. It sort of flits around a bit. 
Um, and so it starts in the 60s. And yeah, it's just so well written. It's like a real kind of uh, capturing the, the eras as they go past in their own lives. Um, yeah, I'm just loving it. I think it's really good. I am also still, and I haven't picked this up for a while, uh, in the middle of The Only Girl by Robin Green. This is uh, My Life and Times on the Masthead of Rolling Stone. Yes, so she was for a period in the 70s, early 70s, the only woman writer on Rolling Stone magazine. Um, and it's, so it's the era of um, uh, Huntress Thompson. And, is he nice? Yeah, he actually does. He, he seems legitimately like crazy. Right. Um, and yeah, but he's just wild. Right. Um, uh, and um, Annie Leibovitz, Leibovitz, who was a photographer. I really love how kind of, um, she's kind of feisty. So, I mean, she's in her 70s now when she wrote, when she wrote this book and it just has a real sort of sass to it. Um, she's, yeah, she really sort of captures the spirit of the time. Um, yeah, it's just really fun. Way. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm also buddy reading with Amy, um, this Diane Keaton book, which is, let's just say it wasn't pretty. Um, which is kind of a memoir, but it's a memoir sort of focused uh, the essays uh, about Diane Keaton's kind of relationship to herself, to her body, her hair, her clothes. Um, there's also stuff about, you know, like her children, her dad. Um, so I'm not, not hugely far into it, but I'm really enjoying it. And we're both really enjoying it. Um, she can really write really well. It sort of sounds like her, um, but it's not just kind of like someone's just written down how she speaks. It kind of feels nicely constructed and crafted as well she's just great and that's her it's, she writes about how she um wears hats all the time because she's not really comfortable with her hair which is quite thin and her uh, her eyes which i hadn't really sort of noticed she compares to like she says her dad had really sort of similar eyes that sort of slanted oh, okay. um so she sort of covers those up and yeah i just get a real sort of more of a sense of herself like who she really is mm. which i'm really enjoying is that it that's it. When you were talking about that and you were saying about the voice, it reminded me of the book that I would like to buy that um, oh, yes. I want to possibly break my book buying brand for, right. which is the Jessica Simpson um, memoir. Oh. Charles, I'll stop talking about this. I would. I don't know if anyone's read it and what it's like, but I've heard like really good things about it. And we're not sure if it's coming out here. Well, all. it's not released here at the moment, but I don't know if it's going to be released. I don't know. I haven't right. really... Yeah. So it's only out in America. Yeah. Um, but someone on Twitter, there's been really positive stuff about yeah, it, hasn't yeah. there? Anyway, well, I want to read that Jessica so Simpson book. I'm super book. excited about the Jessica Simpson book. Yeah. I did love the TV. Right. What was it called? Newlyweds. Well, it's a big part of your life then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And apparently she's just like talks about all, like it's really open about right. how awful all these celebrity guys are who she's had relationships okay. with. So I got to keep thinking about that. It's a big news. Yeah. I think <laughs> Yesterday, I um, there's uh, in Cardiff this weekend. There's the uh, Seren Cardiff Poetry Festival, um, so it's like a free day event. And I was asked to read yesterday morning, and it's in like this big, beautiful building. So it's the Temple of Peace and Health. Um, it's very sort of grand, echoey kind of chamber. I couldn't go. So no, I, think I, I was working. But I did meet up with Tina and Heather. Um, so it's 
just so cool to meet people that I only know through this. <laughs> and we kind of hung out, and it was just great. It was a really good day. And um, one of the other readers um, was Emily Cotterill, and I think all three of us ended up buying her little pamphlet um, afterwards because we really liked her reading. Um, I kind of liked all the readings, but um, yeah, this one I'm quite excited to read. I sort of allowed myself to treat myself to a book for the first time this year. And yeah, I think that I just might just kind of flick through it in the next couple of days and get through that one as mm. well. Um, but that was, yeah, that was such a nice day. Which is, but I'm knackered now. Because yeah. yesterday was like the most social yeah. day for me. And I was like, going back and forth. It was like raining all day. So I had sort of, I was soaked and I had to mm. go walk back home, get changed, come back into town again. But it was great. It was really good. So I did get to meet Tina, didn't I, and her yeah. partner, but only kind of for a little coffee. But I didn't get to meet Heather, so no, 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 no. <laughs> I have to do that at the yeah, time. Definitely. Should I just say about the books I've read now? I suppose that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's what do you well. think? Yeah. I'll just grab them. So, um, as recommended by Anne Wen, talking yes. of Heather, mm. Unicorn versus Goblins. As I was reading that, I thought I don't remember there being lots of goblins in here. Oh, really? Did you read it properly? Well, yeah. Anyway, Unicorn vs. <laughs> Goblins by um, Dana Simpson, another Phoebe and her unicorn adventure. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have volume one, so this is volume three. So I've started with that and I've got volume yeah. four to read next. Well, also, as recommended by Anne Wynn, I've got the bad guys um, <laughs> ordered at the library yeah. at the moment. So Yeah, yeah. we're just going to take Anne Wynn's recommendations from now, from now on. on. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. It was kind of funny. I felt like it was less of one big story as more as a little snippet. Which was fine, yeah. but it wasn't. Like comic booky. Yeah, it was yeah. a bit more comic booky, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was really cute. Um, the other library book I read was The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. Which I, I, I've read previously, and yeah. we, we had the same thoughts, really, didn't we? Well, I started it. We're not we, massive James Baldwin fans. I know, Let's get, feels, put that out there. Yeah, but right. it feels wrong. Well, I think he's, he's, like, um, he's having a definite renaissance at the moment. We've all, we've struggled with his books. I can't remember which one I started and mm. then gave up. And you started Giovanni's Room again? No, I, no. I started Another Country and got like halfway through at least and gave up. And did you say it was? I found it quite misogynistic. I found it quite misogynistic. Yeah, I found the way he wrote about women in that book was just felt massively dated, and I think mm. that's not something that has ever discussed with James Baldwin. I think he's a brilliant writer. And like he can really write well. I mean, like this. Yeah. As so you're I, saying is. So I read the first. So the beginning, which starts Dear Jane, which is the letter to his nephew, yeah. which is like about five page, three or four pages at the beginning, and there's one bit which I was just thought that was just so beautiful. Mm. Um, which started with, well, you were born here, you came something like fifteen years ago, and through your father and mother and grandmother looking about the streets through which they were carrying you, staring at the walls into which they brought you, had every reason to be heavy-hearted, yet they were not. For here you were when it goes on and I thought that was really beautiful and I said to you this is amazing yeah. and then you were like just wait <laughs> it does dip and then it was yeah and for such a short book I really I did really struggle to get through it and there's a lot about it actually becomes more about it's more about religion isn't it yeah so yeah I don't know yeah I liked it but it yeah I don't think I'll be reading much more James Baldwin. I, I kind of like like to read the um, If Bill Street Could Talk. I'm kind of interested yes, in that one. Yes, maybe we'll try to we try that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that the way? Mm -hmm. Oh, some of it's like really beautiful. If you read yeah. that kind of thing, if you read little bits, it's yeah. really nice. But then the whole thing, I yeah. just found. I found like the the Tanahisi Coates um, book. What was it called? The that's kind of an update of this. Yeah. The one that he's written to his. Son, Son, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I loved that, and I thought that was much more powerful and yeah. sustained, like the voice throughout. Same. And maybe it, obviously it's more you know relevant to our times yeah. now, but um, I really loved that one. Uh, I read Traveling Sprinkler by Nicholson Baker. This was an error on my part. <laughs> um, I read some other Nicholson Baker. We love Nicholson Baker. Well, do you, follow him on Twitter if you don't follow him on Twitter already, yeah. because he's so delightful. Yeah. And he posts um, really beautiful photographs that he takes, like of little bits of his um, writing space, or just like, you know, beautiful light coming into his space. He's, he's been doing lots of drawings as well. He's a very cute old man. He is. Yeah, for someone that <laughs> writes such perverted novels. So I read a couple. I was wondering how you described them when you called them perverted novels. I love his sort of erotic fiction. Yeah. I love... I love 
pretty much everything uh, apart from this one, which, which I he was... recommended from me. Well... <laughs> That's what's so confusing about this. I whole didn't thing. recommend it. Sean was reaching out to get House of Holes, which we've also got, and I was like, maybe you don't want to read that one right now because it's quite, you know, it's like the most filthy of his books. I read his other filthy ones years ago. Yeah. Like... Yeah. And I was like, well, maybe that's not the book you want okay. to read right now. Because I didn't think you were, you know, I think you were just pulling out. It was interesting. and I haven't read this one. So I said, maybe read this one, which is really just quite sweet. And it is quite a sort of sweet indie kind of book. And I read it years ago, so I'd kind of forgotten about it. I gave it three stars. So I kind of thought, you know, I'll, if she, when once Sean reads it, we can get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, and but I was like, hoping would, you would like it more. Why would anyone, like, recommend a three-star book? To someone that they love. You got me, Shani. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a solid three. It was three star book. It was. So it was fine. Very much so. I had to read it. Yeah. Um, he is lovely, and actually, mm. there's there's lots of very sweet stuff in there. There's like a, a guy who's a poet who he starts um, making music with. Uh, he's got a neighbour who has like a, a an eighteen year old son, and he's like in his fifties. Yeah. And they're like talking about music. There's lots about music because it has a soundtrack to go with it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. But it's kind of because it was well, it was written in 2013. 2013. So the music is kind of um, it feels earlier than that, yeah, really, doesn't it? it? Does. Which may which meant that I had then had to go and listen to like Fountains of Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a few songs he talked. About. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. talked about that. I looked up and then I was just like, oh, why am yeah. I listening to this? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't love it. It didn't really work as a novel for me, but I. I liked it. Yeah, it I was. Like, he, he, he's he's a, charming, isn't he? Yeah, so, he's a lovely writer. Yeah. Um, and there was something very sweet about it. Yeah. Uh, and now we can get rid of it. So one left book in the house. <laughs> yeah. So. Win win. And the traveling sprinkler is, um, like about yeah, a sprinkler for your garden that I guess moves. Yes. Yeah. It's also um, part two of a book that we haven't read the first one of. So. I quite like the things of like, because our oven was recently broken. The Anthropologist, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, something like that. I quite like the, our yeah. oven's broken. Our That's, oven's broken, yeah. yeah. And the, the main bit we can do is still do stuff on the hob. But I quite liked, like, his barn falls down and then he's just mm. like, oh, and then just calls him. I don't know. There was something, yeah. like, kind of relatable about those really boring everyday yeah. things yeah, that yeah. happen. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, he, he is, like, he does write about the mundane. Yeah. Like, mainly. Yeah. So that was that one. It was fine. We can get rid of it. Yeah. And then the other, another one that I only found fine as well, so mm. three stars, was this Deborah Lee <gasps> thing, which is Swimming Home. Um, and I found this... This one, in the end, I kind of had a little bit... I had to force myself to kind of finish yeah. it. But, I, you know, I still liked it. Yeah. This one I found really easy to read. So it was like a two-day read. Yeah. Really easy, really kind of compelling. Mm. Um, but also... I'm not sure. It reminded me of a couple of things. It reminded me of the dreaded Olivia Lang's Crudo, oh, which I hated. Yeah. And then it also reminded me a little bit of um, Ali Smith, The Accidental, I think. Yeah. And it's like about this young girl who, um, well, this is quite rich family. They're in a villa, and then this young girl um, turns up and she doesn't have anywhere to stay. They let her stay there, and she, and the main guy's a poet, and this young girl really likes the poet. She really likes his poems and kind of wants her, him to read her stuff. So she's kind of on purpose there, really, to try and kind mm. of infiltrate. Um, and I felt it was quite tropey. Everything you expected to happen kind of happened. Mm -hmm. um, I, she, the young girl, she talked about as being anorexic, and I felt it was wasn't really done very well. And I felt it glamorized mental illness a bit as well. That once, oh no, it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize 2012. I remember it being quite sort of a big deal at the time because it was she wasn't hugely known back then. Okay. So I remember when it first came out and a few people I knew read it and really yeah. liked it. I, I think it might be, um, so yeah, a few years ago, so maybe it's now, I mean, dated to maybe not the right word. Yeah. But that because there's some, because there are books like this that yeah. it feels quite tropey. Yeah. Because in the back, there's a afterward. Which I quite enjoyed. It says here that the, if the setting and plot of Swimming Home are borrowed almost ironically right, from the staid English middle class on holiday novel, all similarities end there. But yeah. I kind of felt I was for me they didn't. It's so. like a, quite a nineties thrillery kind of thing, doesn't it? it? Like, quite, certain, like outsider kind of. It felt quite nineties coming That's, into the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did feel quite nineties. Mm. Maybe in that kind of Ian McEwan or yeah. 
But, you know, I did really like the writing. Well, hold um, on to it, because I might read it. Oh, I was going to get rid of this one. Oh, were you? <laughs> you can, you oh, can read might... it if you want. Oh, I don't know. But it is really, yeah, I, it's very readable, and mm. I enjoyed that kind of, I was drawn to it, and I wanted to keep reading it, but You're I didn't really rate it. You're still convinced you prefer it. her non-fiction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I might still try another one because I, you know, I like being hooked on something. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yeah, so it was twenty twelve. Yeah. Did you say that? But then the one I did enjoy yeah. was Bone Gap by Laura Ruby, which is from my TBR jar. It's been a success. Yeah. Yeah. So you bought me this one a while ago, mm. and I loved it. It's a young adult novel. Um, it's like about two brothers. Their mother has kind of a few years previously has kind of just left them, so they're kind of. I mean, the older brother is old enough to look after them, but they're kind of just fending for themselves and struggling a bit mm. and then there's this um beautiful woman kind of comes to town and she ends up kind of living with them um and then at the beginning of the book she's gone missing and the younger brother has seen her get in a car with someone but thought that maybe she wanted to leave because i guess he's got a bit of like abandonment issues and yeah. she didn't seem to be struggling so so it's a little bit of trying to he feels guilty and about trying to find um, yeah. this woman and then it also has like a little bit of magical realism kind yeah, of it in, in yeah. it as well, but quite nicely done. It does kind of towards the end go a bit more full out, full on, kind of, which yeah. maybe, yeah, wasn't, I don't know. I still give it five stars. I really enjoyed it. I yeah. thought it was wonderful. Um, yeah, it was good. And it's got a thing about, I don't want to sort of say what it is because, you know, not really spoiler but it's something interesting to discover it's okay. one of the characters has this condition which i actually thought was really interestingly dealt with yeah. and just really interesting to talk about as yeah. well so yeah and there's the it, and um the younger brother kind of meets this girl that he starts to fall in love with and her mum owns bees and they have they make honey and it's called hippie queen honey which i really liked and there's lots of like that kind of dip your fingers into hippie queen honey <laughs> So I love this one very much. Recommend. And oh, I, that's good. It was one that I couldn't stop reading it either, mm. and I and I loved it. Yay. Okay. See you in a bit. Bye. So it's um, nearly seven, and I haven't read loads today, but um, I did read a bit of The Awakening Body. Um, There's a bit here that I tagged that says, um, hang on, hang on. (laughs) It has been estimated that out of every million parts of information received and processed by our body, we humans only admit 13 parts into our conscious awareness. That means we only allow ourselves to be conscious of 0.00013% of the data of experience known to our body. Which is not much, is it? No, which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. And the other thing I was reading um, is actually I've been flicking through Happiness magazine as well. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. And it had a little quote that I put on instagram that i liked this guy who looks obviously super spiritual yes big time. Um, and this is sad guru and he says not knowing creates a space inside you which i thought was kind of nice because i'm a a big fan of not knowing <laughs> <laughs> i'm quite of ha- quite happy um to admit not knowing yeah what i'm what i mean and 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 um when I do, I do lots of workshops with people in work. So like with children or adults and then they like ask you, I, they're mainly about art and they ask you questions and um, I don't mind telling them I don't know. Or, yes. You know. Yeah. Anyway, rather than just making stuff up. Yeah. Um, then I had a bath mm. and in the bath I was reading How Not To Diet. I kind of felt like picking that up again. Um yeah, which is by Michael Greger. So I haven't got very far with this. He is going to kind of take down the diet industry. Not take down, I mean he kind of is, but he's going through the diet industry and, and why diets don't work. There was like a really amazing fact that he just sort of shared. He's talking about the main the main kind of diet ones like Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig. These are in America. 
and it's something like even though um i can't find it now but even though like weight watchers will say something like oh this person lost 200 pounds um and so you think oh wow weight watchers is really great the actual average weight loss is over like something like two years was six pounds mm. which is tiny mm. so yes there we go. That's what I've been reading. Oh, well done, sweet. Also, we've got light. We've had lightning here. There's yeah. like the storm. I thought the storm had finished, but lightning, yeah. hail, thunder. Some places are getting evacuated. Yeah, lots of flooding. I think we're okay here, although we're not too far from a river. But no. We'll be all right, I think, Bertie. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it. Well done, Bob. You thought I wouldn't do it, but I did it. Who, what? The people world. watching Everyone. yeah you yeah thought yeah i couldn't do it but i did it yeah people proved, thought you'd given it reading i proved it are you guys i proved it mm. i can read what's your thoughts this was great it was really 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 good um a smidge long maybe um so it's over 400 pages uh, i know i i don't know what bits would would have been cut down really um but and the, it's very much a book of two halves, so it didn't really go where I thought it was going to go. Um, it felt different in tone, the second half to the first half. The writing is brilliant. It's really quite moving. Um, two thumbs up from Bert. How many stars? Well, I mean, Four. if there were half stars, it would be like a 4.5. Mm, there aren't half stars, though. Mm. There aren't, so... It's going to have to be a four because mm. five is like those books that, you know, rock your world. Mm. I'm going to give it a four, mm. but there are no rules, so 0. 0.5. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and um, any other, any life updates? Um, we had a lovely pasta that Sean made with mm -hmm. um, lentils and like a bolognese. Um, um, what else, life updates? I'm quite sweaty. Oh, yeah. 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 That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. How about you, Johnny? Well, I've just been reading my uh, How Not to Diet book. Yes. And um, he's saying that that there's lots of evidence about how chemicals are actually making us fat. So it's not our fault. So on QVC, they were selling a can opener mm. that um, like didn't do the scrapey thing on the side because apparently there's always like a little bit of the metal gets into the food when you open it with a can mm. opener so i know a lot of them have the ring pulls now but those are better yeah but even then there's, there's a layer of um sort of some kind of plasticky thing mm. so cans aren't as good as i thought <sighs> yeah <laughs> what are we gonna do now uh, we just have to buy organic and we cook just have everything to, go to the um zero waste shop yeah let's say goodbye now shall we yeah 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 bye Ready? bye, bye.